Hello and salut everybody. Uh, I am so grateful that you found me. I am so grateful that you are listening to me right now uh, because I always say that no matter what the circumstances, no matter what is going on, it could be worse. We are breathing today. We get another day to live another chance of life. So I uh, pray that you are as grateful as I am, but I am very grateful uh, to have you here listening to me right now. So today I want us to chat about how much you are spending buying prayers. You are buying prayers. You are spending on prayers. You are giving out to be prayed for. While you think about that, welcome back to Chatting with Nicole. If you have not subscribed, do me a favor and subscribe right now. Share this video, like, and also check out the rest of the videos. So thank you very much for being here. And don't forget to turn on the notification button. So thank you very much again for being here. So yes, you heard me and you like, what again, Nicole, what are you talking about? I am talking about how we give pastors, uh, men of God, women of God, money to pray for us. I'm talking about when we ask somebody to pray for us, pastors, women or men of God, whoever, to pray for us. And we have to give money or they have to ask us money. I am talking about how many times we sent money to different country. We sent money to different states. How many times we sent money to somebody, give money to somebody to pray for us. Because if you look at it, it is buying prayers, right? And I did that. I did that. I remember not even long ago, I think less than three years ago was the last time I actually sent money for somebody to pray for me because my sister recommended, because the person was good, he prayed for her. And, you know, she recommended that I should, you know, I should reach out to him and he'll pray for me. And I call him and he asked for money and the money. He didn't just say pay me. He said that to give to the people who will be fasting to, to buy food and, and, and stuff to, to eat. That's their way, his way of asking for money. And I remember that is just the latest, uh, the, the, the latest one. And I remember going to church when I have to, they have to tell me that in order for this thing that you are praying for, you have to write a check. There is a certain amount. It is depends on the amount that, you know, your blessings, your, uh, the speed of your, the, your, the, the speed of <laughs> the, the timeline for your prayers to be answered. It is going to depend on how big, how, how large your check is. And I remember Specifically, I specifically, I remember writing a check because somebody promised that this was a, somebody who was coming and he was like, he was very effective and all of this. I remember writing a check and this big check that I wrote and I felt like I regret it. I, it's like, I felt so, I was so mad at myself after that. I remember doing that a lot. I remember because sometimes when they tell you, you just want to pray for, you want a prayer to be answered. And when you hear a man of God tell you this, you kind of don't want to, you don't know. So you're like, okay, if I don't do this, then I'm going to miss out. If I don't do this, the opposite may happen because sometimes they'll tell you if you don't do it, then things will get worse in your life. So you got, you get that guilt. You get that you know, fear. So you feel like you have to do it. But then sometimes they don't ask us. We really just say, I want you to pray for me. And they'll come out and ask you for money. Or they'll tell you, like this man told me, they have to pay, buy food for those who are fasting or whatever the reason. Or they'll just tell you that in order for this to be effective, Think about how much you can, you know, you can give. This is a sacrifice. This is like you have to give to the church to, 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 
to for your to better your chances <laughs> to better your chances i know you hurt so many circumstances and sometimes the there are people who every month or every week write a check for a certain person for specific prayer so it took me a long time to explain this and to say what I'm trying to say, but you know what I'm trying to say. You understand what I'm talking about. You know you have done it like I did. You know you continue to do it. So my question is, how much are you spending buying prayers? How much are you willing to buy for prayers? How much are you willing? You are paying for it. I'm doing this because prayers, I'm doing this for the prayers. And how much, how, 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 how effective have your prayers been that you are paying for? You are paying for them. You are buying them because if I'm given all the money that I have wasted, given out to be prayed for, and I will tell you, none of it had come true. That is just the truth. The truth. I have not gotten any of the stuff that I have given money for, sacrificed money for, paid for. None of them have come to pass. None of them came through. I didn't even feel anything. So we are buying these prayers and we continue to do it every time. And we think that that's what, what is keeping us safe. That is what is giving us what we are having. So my question is, how much are you going to spend buying prayers? And how much have you spent buying prayers? How much are you willing to spend on prayers? And how much do you believe in that? So the reason I'm saying this is I, I was doing it out of ignorance. And a lot of us are doing it out of ignorance. That's why I'm doing this so that we can wake up. That's why I'm doing this so we can know because the Bible said that, you know, the word of God said that we perish by ignorance. Well, we don't know things and it's just not even just the Bible in life. When you don't know something, when you are taking a medication and you don't see the, the side effect, you don't see the caution, you don't know that you shouldn't mix it with this and this and you did it. You're going to cause, it's going to be, and it's going to be harmful to you versus being a good thing for your body. It's going to be harmful to, for your body. When you take something, you mix something, you don't know what it's supposed to do for your body. You are going to be in trouble. So that is what I want. I'm doing this because a lot of us are doing this. If you are paying for prayers, giving money to people to pray for you, it is not, we're not supposed to be doing that. So when I learned this, I have stopped. When I learned this, when somebody's praying or somebody's asking to be for me to pray for me. And when they mention money, I don't do it anymore. And when somebody, I ask somebody to pray and they mention money, no matter how they bring it up, I don't trust that person. I don't trust them and I don't do it. The reason why I'm saying this is as I learn, again, we live and learn and we have to grow. We cannot just stay ignorant. We cannot just stay in the ignorance, right? So we have to grow. That's why I don't want to stay. I didn't stay in my ignorance. So I am grow. I am learning as I learn and I understood. <laughs> There's a, a real man of God, a real man of God, a real woman of God, a real pastor who is really serving God, serving God and believe in God and believe in Jesus and is serving Jesus, God's people, he cannot ask you to give him money before he prayed for you. Even if you give it, he will not take it. You just have to be, it has to be, it will be a donation to the church. That is separate. But just to go ahead and give money before a prayer can be done to you or for you, it is wrong. A real man of God should not, will not ask you to give them money before they can pray for you. They will do it freely because that is the word of God. If you really serve God, if you really a believer, you really a man of God, you will not ask anyone in your congregation or outside Anyone, wherever that person is, whatever the color of the skin of the person, whatever denomination that person is coming from, whoever that person is, 
you will not ask for money. Better yet, you're supposed to even be praying for the whole world. Everybody, no discrimination, no asking of anything. Your prayer is supposed to be free. So that's why I'm saying we are paying for, for prayers and we are not supposed to pay for prayers. Men of God, women of God are supposed to serve God freely. They're supposed to give their talent and their anointing. Everything God gave them, they're supposed to give it to us freely. They're supposed to do it for Jesus, for God. And as they do it, based of the benefit, based of the fruits that the congregation, the people are getting, then they will be blessing the church. They will be blessing the pastors based on the fruits, based of what they are getting, voluntarily. So remember what I say about generosity. You give it because, oh my God, this church blessed me so much. This pastor blessed me so much. So you give it freely, joyfully, abundantly. You give freely because he prayed and something happened. So you are recognizing, you are paying it forward. You are, you are giving it freely. It is not ask. So I want us to understand when we are giving tight, when we are giving money to the church, when we are giving money to the pastor, helping the pastor, when we are, you know, helping the needy or a project at church, when we are doing that, we need, I want us to understand the difference. That is different than sending money. I know a lot of you and I hear people say, I sent money to this pastor outside of the country. You got some money to other pastors because you know that they have anointing or they have this. You heard this and that and you've been sending money to them to pray for you. We are not supposed to buy prayers. The Bible said that we were supposed to get, we, we were supposed to pray for one another. It does say that if you're sick, you know, let go to the, 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 you go to church and church will pray for you. Church will pray for you, your brothers and sisters. They will pray for you, but it never say that we have to pay or it never say that pastors or brothers and sisters should get money for prayers. So if you are somebody, I do not want this video to go long. So I'm going to split it into three. We're going to come back and talk about actual prayers. But for now, on this one. I just want to remind you, my brothers and my sisters, very, very, and, and very friendly reminder that think about it. If you're giving money to somebody to pray for you, you are buying prayers and we shouldn't be buying prayers. And if you're giving money for somebody to pray for you, think about the effect. Is it effective? Are you getting whatever it is they're promising you? And whatever you are actually getting, is that really prayers? Is that really coming from prayers from God? Because sometimes we do things we don't know. We receive things we don't know that whatever, wherever that thing is coming from. And that is coming in our lives. It's actually making things worse in our life. Thinking things, and if you're spiritual, if you're, you know, you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe taking other things out of your life, making you think that this is actually working when it's actually not working because giving money to be prayed, that money can be used for a lot of things. Besides from that, that is a different conversation we're going to have. Besides from that, I just want us to know that if you ask for a prayer, it's supposed to be given to you freely. If you are sick or you're going through something, your pastor, a man of God, your brothers and sisters at church, they're supposed to pray for you freely. No strains attached. It's supposed to be given freely and honestly. Because if you're charging for prayers, the prayer is not genuine. First of all, the prayers is not going to be genuine because you're not supposed to be doing that. And if you're not praying for somebody genuinely, you are not yourself. You are not in the right mind to pray. You are not cleansed. You are not sanctified. You cannot pray for somebody to be effective. You can do it all you want. If you're not sanctified, you are not in the right place, in the right 
side with God, if you're not doing it the way you're supposed to do it, it is not going to be effective. So I am addressing those who are asking money, receiving money, you know, selling prayers, selling this call prayers. And I'm also addressing us who are believing it and sending the money and purchasing prayers. We think it is the right way to do. It is the right thing to do. So I just want, like I said, it's very, very friendly reminder. That if you, if you're trying to understand or trying to get deeper into this, I want you to read the letters of Paul starting from first Corinthians. I want you, I don't want you to just say read one. I want you to read all, especially if you, if you're doing this, especially those of you who are accepting, you should know better. But if you're accepting, you know, charging for prayers, you should read what the word of God said. We are supposed to give freely. That means our time and energy and prayer and sacrifice. We're supposed to give that freely, especially if you're women of God and men of God. That's what you're supposed to do. You are not supposed to charge for it. And my brother, my sisters, as I have done so many times out of ignorance, I want you guys to think about it. You shouldn't be paying for prayers. If you ask for a pastor, a real pastor, or a, let me say a pastor or men or women of God to pray for you, and they tell you they need money for fasting, they need money to buy this and buy that, don't trust that prayers. Don't, don't trust it. If you ask for somebody to pray for you and they literally like solicitate, like they, they give you a reason why you should bring, you should pay them. Yeah, I, I will be, I, I, I will caution that. I will think about that twice because if they're really going to pray for you and this is really a man and woman of God, this is a real one. They will not ask you. They will continue to pray for you and continue to check in with you and continue to, to, to do everything they can and pray for you. And, 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 and whenever, you know, your prayer got answered or the way they are behaving, the way they are acting, that's why you can bless the church. You can bless them. You can bless them your, yourself and you, it will come out of your heart. You have to give joyfully because remember, God loves a, loves a joyful giver. And all our talents, including being a man and woman of God, it is coming from God. And we, God given us that for, to us, giving that to us, giving that to us freely. And we're supposed to give it back freely. So we should never be paying for prayers. And we should never be charging for prayers. So I want you guys, don't just take my word for it. But I want you to learn. I want you to look it up. I want you to think about it. And stop doing certain things that may even turn out to be, you know, worse than, you know, you thought without even knowing. So let's educate ourselves. Let's know better by reading the words, by asking questions, and by knowing what to do and what not to do. Now on the next video, I'm going to talk about praying ourselves, how we can actually pray and why we should pray as well as other people pray for us. But until then, I want you to share this video with everyone you know. Share please, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. Turn on the notification button and also check out the rest of the videos. Stay safe and blessed and I'll see you right on the next one.